Life as a solo in Rust is like playing Rust on hard mode. With even the most simple tasks being so much more difficult, you need every advantage you can get. Today's base is designed with you in mind. Featuring a quick and easy starter with no gimmicks and expanded in stages, you can build this base without having to farm your entire life. With an upkeep that even a solo can manage, plenty of mobility, storage, and security, this base does it all and more. When you're starting a wipe with no BPs and limited resources, you don't want to have to build a starter base just to have to destroy it and build something else. For that reason, you want to make sure any base that you're going to be building has an easy to build starter that works effectively. Today, we're going to be starting with a one by one. Now, depending on your terrain around you, you're going to want to place it at roughly this height here as your starter piece. This is going to save you a lot of hassle later and make sure you've got the clearance for what you're going to need later. Go ahead and upgrade that and we're going to place a triangle in front of it. Next on the right side, we're going to place a double door and another double door right here to seal things off and close it in. This is going to be just your standard starter one by one. Of course, not very much room, but it's going to have plenty of utility and make things easier down the line. Sticking your TC in the corner like so, we'll have plenty of room for a large box here, a furnace right beside it, and a second large box here. Now, of course, this isn't going to be your entire base, and it's certainly not going to last for too long. But before we go expanding any further, let's go ahead and add our shelf to this TC room. We do that by simply coming around to the backside here, placing a foundation, and building back in. Once you've built inside, you can see you've got a new shelf, and you can upgrade that to wood or stone. And then we're just going to do the same thing for the boxes up here, starting off with this one. You're going to want to make sure to place it nice and center, as close to the TC as you can. And then you should be able to slip one in right here. Of course, eventually we will want to upgrade these doors, but as a starter base, this will do plenty. Of course, once you're ready to expand and you've got those metal doors on, we're going to go ahead and add another triangle foundation here and a square off to the side. Go ahead and upgrade these and again add a double door. Close in this area here. Add your roof piece and go ahead and create a shelf. This is going to act entirely as a storage room and how you decorate it, there are really a few options. You can also get a small box in here and small boxes to the side. It really comes down to how much loot room do you need? Alternatively, I like to place shotgun traps between these as it can really be annoying for raiders in these tight quarters. Go ahead and close this off and add a door frame here. For your workbench, we're going to be adding that right here and we'll replace this with our workbench 2 and eventually our workbench 3. And at the moment, this is what we're living out of. Barely any room to walk through and mostly focus on storage, our goal is to expand. While this base doesn't have too much expansion to go through, it is useful to farm it up and get it built as soon as possible. Adding another triangle here, we're going to go ahead and place a square off it again. And you can see that while, by doing this, we're creating some nice space difference between the rooms. This is going to help later and make sure that raiding this base through any of the walls is only going to get you into one room. Now do not upgrade this square here, instead we're going to place triangles all around it and upgrade those instead. At this point, you can go ahead and destroy this square, and we're going to build two squares over here. Now, these you can do later, as it's not tilt, as it is part of an expansion. And while we're out here, we're going to go ahead and mark the honeycomb. To do that, we're simply going to add triangles in every spot available, and then we'll upgrade those. Now, once you've got this taken care of, we're going to come back over here, and we're going to seal this in here. Go ahead and upgrade these right away. And then we're going to actually seal them in just a little bit further. Right here, we're going to add a half wall and create a little shelf slash jump up, destroying the bottom piece here. Go ahead and upgrade these now. Close in all of your honeycomb. and come back around to here. Now finally here, we're gonna add a window frame facing outwards. 
And then between each of these, you're going to want to add your walls. Now, which way they face isn't too big of an issue, but I do like to have them facing outwards like this. And we're going to add one more right here. Once that's done, we can switch to a roof piece, rotate that away from us and place that here and then come in with the triangle roof piece here and here. Upgrade all of these. Now it's important that you have all of your walls placed early as once you've got these placed and upgraded, you'll no longer be able to do so because they do kind of stick into the next wall. On the roof here, we're going to go ahead and close some things off. Nobody needs to know what's going on down there. And then we're going to close things right here. You are going to come around ignoring the honeycomb pieces outside, leaving those out. Now, when you're doing this, you do want to build around everywhere except for the honeycomb. That's because the honeycomb can either be turned into turret spots later or additional honeycomb if you prefer. Coming back inside, we're going to close off right here and we're going to add our front door here. That wasn't supposed to upgrade. It was supposed to be this one here. I make mistakes sometimes. Go ahead and upgrade all around here. And then we're gonna put a roof on it. When you're doing this, you're gonna wanna leave this triangle in this corner open as that's gonna be our access to the next floor. Get that closed off. We're going to simply add a wall right here and you'll be adding a jump up as well as a double door. If you don't have the garage doors yet, you can simply add this double door to lock off anyone going upstairs on you. And that's going to give you some nice protection. Next, let's come back down here to this spot that we left open. One of the things as a solo is, well, everything is a lot harder and a lot more dangerous. For that reason, it can be really useful to limit the amount of trips you have to take out to places. And since I don't want to go to outposts every time I need low grade fuel, I like to have my own refinery. And this spot down here gives me the perfect spot for my own little personal refinery. This can make my life a lot easier and save me a lot of hassles. Coming around to here, we've got something looking like this with everything kind of separated off and double doors filled in everywhere else. Ultimately, we are going to want garage doors in all of these spots, but there's also a little more going on. So before we go too much further, we do need a shelf over here. Upgrade that and this is going to act as our quick drop spot. Additionally, as I mentioned earlier, I really like the shotgun traps. Placing a shotgun trap in just the right position can really help for those pesky door campers. Because we are lacking on the turret front, a couple shotgun traps can be a great way to save your life early on. Of course, if you still don't have the BPs for them or don't want to buy it from the outpost, you can always just make sure you close the doors behind you before you open the next one. Coming inside into the left, we're going to be creating a respawn room here. Starting off in this back corner, we're going to place a locker. And just behind or in front of it, we're going to place a window. This is going to be nice to close up and increase our security when we log off, but also give us tons of space inside. Next, depending on how many people are in your base, you can place one or two beds here. Because I am typically playing solo, I get to instead operate with a box and a bed, which gives me that option to put any meds or extra bullets in there. Additionally, if you place things correctly, you can actually place a shotgun trap here. Now, this does require that I place this close enough to the wall, which apparently I've not done. There we go. This is going to be very useful if you are getting camped so that when you open the door that you're going to have here, if someone's there, they get blasted before you do. Coming over here and going to the back room. Of course, I do recommend garage doors in all of these spots, but until you have the BP and the gears, you're going to have to live with just the regular doors. This room back here is an important one for a solo, featuring a mixing table and a repair bench. While that might not seem like much, this combination of things, which you can get a little closer once you get the garage door, this combination of things is going to save your life because you can't just be getting rid of everything. You're going to need to reskin and repair often 
and mostly this mixing table here is going to make your life a lot easier, allowing you to quickly make things like gunpowder or explosives, even low grade, while you're crafting other items. As a small group or a solo, this can save you a ton of time in preparation for raids, creating ammo, or really just anything you might need. As well, the berry options can be incredibly useful, saving you a lot of time in farming resources. Coming upstairs, we're going to need that garage door. It's important to note that when you're placing your garage doors, you want to do it with the roller facing inwards towards the base. This is also going to count for your triangles, as it's going to help make sure that they don't peek out through the sides of the wall. Do keep in mind, however, that these stone frames do actually peek out through the wall a little bit. For both this spot going down and your respawn room, a double door is perfectly fine. If you do want to go with the garage door, that's also acceptable, but honestly I prefer to leave them as these double doors. As for the other spots, getting through the base is a lot easier with garage doors. Coming upstairs and working on the next floor, we can go ahead and close this off. Now of course you could have done this earlier if roof access to was really important to you, it'll really depend on how many resources you have. Expanding beyond this is fairly simple, but we're going to first start off by doing some frames here. Now, additionally, if you're not planning on doing turrets, simply have those be regular walls. And then we're going to move all around the front here, adding some windows to give us that front look. But unfortunately, the back end is going to get closed off. This means that you are going to have to go up to the roof anytime you're looking to counter anyone at the back. Do that, we're going to add another jump up system like this. And we're going to close off right here. Now we're going to save closing this off for a little bit, instead just leaving it like that. Coming over here, we're going to add ramps to this side in here. And additionally, I like to place boxes in front of it to give me that nice little height. And then of course you can go ahead and seal this off. And we're going to go ahead and add one more double door just right here. And this is going to make sure that anybody camping your front area can't kill you as you try to make it to the roof. And then finally, we're going to add another double door frame right here like so. Jump up top and add two half walls. And close that off. You are going to want to make sure this is a garage door, which doesn't matter which way it faces too much. And then we're on the roof. Closing off the roof is a very simple task, rotating roof pieces out and going around. We can go ahead and upgrade those. And then up here, we're going to switch to a triangle roof and upgrade those. But maybe this isn't where you want it to end. Even though you've got coverage from your roof and you can defend the base, we're not always online. And for that, it can be very useful to have electricity. So let's take care of adding a windmill real quick to the base, and we're going to do that by building up here. And ladders will be your friend at this point. And once you get up to here where you've got that 11% stability, you've gone too far. Dropping back down a floor, we're going to get to 16% stability and you'll be able to add your triangles on either side. From here, we can go ahead and place your windmill. Keep in mind, you would have to have laddered up right here. Jump over to here and we're going to just back out a little bit and eventually get it. From here, you can jump down to your death or onto your ladder. And of course, you're going to need to get back up there to power it. But we need somewhere to put the power. Coming back down, that's what this corner here is going to be for. Adding our large battery into the corner, we've got plenty of room for all of our wires, gadgets, and gizmos. With that all nicely wired up, we can go ahead and start hooking up turrets. This should generate more power than you really need, as even on a low point, you're going to generate 149 power in. With each turret taking 10 power, you have plenty of wiggle room. Coming upstairs, we're going to start with a turret here and here, which is going to give us that nice roof protection. 
They'll both be able to cover all of the necessary angles, and that's more than enough. With those turrets configured to a 10 branch out, and our smart switch turned on, we now have active roof protection. But that's not all we're looking for. Coming back out to the side of the base here, we're gonna put some turrets up in these spots here. Now this one here is completely optional, as a turret doesn't add too too much in this spot, but I do like to leave the option open. Everywhere else, we're gonna simply add in the frames like so, and we're gonna put a turret down back here. Now once your turret's placed, you can go ahead and add your chain link fence. The chain link fence is gonna make it a lot harder for people to shoot out your turrets, and the turret's still gonna work fine. You also can still access the turret very easily. Of course, for you to destroy the chain link fence is really not too difficult. Because you'd already not have to worry about getting shot by a turret, you have the option of just sitting there with a sword and slowly breaking it. Repeat the process on all three sides, and then we can go ahead and hook those up. Now that we've got all of our turrets hooked up, we've got a couple options for this room. My preference personally is to go with the window method. The window adds a lot of security to this spot without costing too much or requiring something like heavy doors. Alternatively, if you are worried people might break your turrets, it can sometimes be a little frustrating to wire through a window. For that reason, you might want to go with the double door frame and add a double door. It is really up to you as to which you prefer, this adding a little less security but making things a little easier later. In front of this spot here, I like to add a locker. I, I love lockers. Lockers, lockers are amazing. Lockers save you so much hassle. And honestly, a roof camp locker is incredibly useful to have. And even though I've got a bed downstairs, I usually go the route of adding a roof camp bed. Contrary to the name, it is mostly meant to defend my base in case I'm under attack. Finally, all that's really left is a couple optimal shotgun traps. While not necessary at all, these can be a great asset in the event of an online or even an offline raid. With all the major places covered, we come back downstairs to finish things off just a little bit. Now obviously, we're going to want to replace all of these doors. Now down here you do have the option to use armored doors, but these two right here should definitely be garage doors as well as this one. Because I don't like to give anything away, I'll have all of my rollers facing towards inwards here in case someone raids in from this way. Opening these up, we've got our chute and cooker. We've got a nice little storage room and our TC room in the back. I guess finally this spot right here, which should have been done a lot sooner, is just a furnace room. This is a spot for a nice couple furnaces, and we can window that up whenever we log off. Coming up over here, we're going to add some boxes to this spot. Adding one nice and snug into the corner here, and another one here. Coming in through, we can do a small box here, a small box here, plenty of small boxes in these rooms here, and this room here. And then of course, let's not forget the small boxes here. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, Rex, why are you showing me all these small boxes in these weird spots? I already know this. Well, because someone always tells me, Rex, you could have put a small box. Rex, you could have put, yeah, I know, I know. You can put small boxes everywhere. But this is it, this is what you get, all right? This is all the small, I'm not gonna put small boxes everywhere. I'm not doing it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe for future content. And I hope you have a good wipe. Peace out.